I'm going to tinker with my motor a little bit today. I don't know how much I'll get done. Let's start by taking the cover off. Alright my friend, today's video is a how-to video. How to what? How to repair, replace, or check electronic fuel primer on a Johnson outboard engine. Now, how do you make a how-to video when you don't know how to yourself? You just plunder through and hope things will work their thing way out. So, whether I repair this thing or not, at least we're going to say we gave it to college try. My battery is disconnected. Fuel line pinched off. Whether that's the proper procedure or not, I don't know. Okay, what I'm going to try to do today, if I can squeeze it in, I got to get to this portion right here. It's the primer cylinder. It's got a crack right here. But it's not engaging at all when I push the key in over there. But I'm going to go ahead and take it off because I saw some gas leaking right in, in this area right here when I had to turn this bypass open to start the engine. It looks like this carburetor has got to come off to get to it because the screw in behind there is dang near impossible to get to. There's one here and one in the back. Uh, to start with, I guess I better disconnect the fuel line and raise it up where it won't leak. I don't know if it's going to work or not. I took a C clamp and clamped my fuel line right there to stop any fuel from flowing. I don't know if I've actually got it clamped tight enough or not. I didn't really want to damage the line. But we'll pull this fuel line off and see if it stops the fuel from flowing from the gas tank anyway. If not, I'll have to come up with some other remedy. Let me get a rag. Let's see how much fuel gushes forth here. Well, hopefully I got it pinched tight enough. I'm gonna give that a whirl anyway. Saves me disconnecting that fuel line completely if this works. Alright, I've got the excess fuel drained out of that line. Okay, where do we want to start, Walter? Well, this can go. This one here can go. Hmm. Got two screws holding this on have to come off. I guess some of these things are mounted different on some engines. What I saw in the manual doesn't say anything about having to move all this carburetor and stuff, and I don't see any other way to get to that booger bear. So we'll start by pulling this thing off. Glasses on, Walter. There's one screw out. I'm 
be lucky if I don't drop this screw. Two screws out. The steel line's got to come off. Whoops, gonna need my rag again. We're going to disconnect the steel line right here where it connects up to this rail. Oop, we need a nut driver. Alright, I couldn't find a nut driver. We'll use a screwdriver. Alright, the excess steel did come out. It was in that line. Let's take stock of where we are. Okay, that's out of the way. This is about to be out of the way. Plastic hose clamp off that I couldn't get a while ago. Is there any chance I can get that nut off, screw off back there? No. Alright you booger bear. Now we know we can get on that screw there. Looks like once I get the carburetor off, there's still going to be a thing in the way. Well, it's just a nut though. We can take it off. I'm the pain in the tail. Alright, let's find a socket to fit that carburetor. Well, we know we can get the carburetor off. It might help. And we're pretty sure we can get it back on alright. Let's take, start by taking this screw right here out. Why it's even necessary to be there, I don't know. They have carburetors are installed with four nuts and one screw. The screw is gone. When I pull this off, I gotta be careful not to damage the gasket in the, behind this flange. Let's start with the bottom one.
One carburetor removed. All right, Walter, are we going to get lucky enough to take that screw out, or is this nut going to come out of the way? I know these wires are going to be disconnected. Wow, look at the grease on there. Believe it or not, this little piece right here costs 200 something dollars. They say they make a kit for it. We're gonna find out. First we gotta get it apart and see what's broke. That wire looks like it's pulled down out of there. Purple to purple. Black to black. Well, by George, that screw is turning. That screw is turning. What else is possibly going to be disconnected? Looks like there's some hoses on the back of here. We'll pull out on it and see if we can get enough slack to pull them hoses off. I'll have to get on my manual and think, read how to test this thing with a with a meter. Everything went fine except I lost one screw down under there that holds the back of this saw. I'm gonna find that screw. Presentation. This is going to conclude part one. I took a zip tie and pulled all them wires I had hanging out here up here close. Just lightly stuck a fuel line back on there. I have the battery disconnected and the only thing stopping my fuel coming from that tank is this C-clamp on here. But if it holds five minutes, nor to hold five days, we're going to leave it on there. Hopefully not any gasoline or dripping here. But I'm going to cover the motor back up. Uh, while I'm testing that solenoid, uh, that primer switch. While I'm testing that primer solenoid. This hole up here on top is where we lost that piece off the motor the other day. You can see where it was laying. It's an airflow sensor of some kind. Anyway, we're going to cover this motor up and proceed to disassemble our primer solenoid. That concludes this portion. Stick with me, my friends.